We've tested a lot of single board computers on this channel, but this one may be the best when it comes to emulation ability. This tiny board has the power needed to run most retro games all the way up to PS2 with some Switch mixed in. Today we're going to take a look at the RK3588S PC from Firefly. Unlike the mini ITX board that I've already reviewed, this is a smaller form factor SBC built around the RK3588S SOC. This board comes with significantly less I.O. compared to the bigger board, but it's not limited in the performance department. If you've been following this channel, you might recognize the board on the right because it's the RK3566 board that I've already reviewed from this company. As you'll see in this video, this new RK3588S is a massive leap over that older product, including most of the other products on the market today. Before we jump into the video, I want to show off what the board looks like without the included fan. If you saw my RK3588 video, you'll notice that this SOC is missing the metal lid. I also want to point out that this board comes with an overkill cooling solution in the form of this small fan and radiator attachment. Like the Mini ITX, this fan is going full tilt all the time no matter what the load is on the board, and it is too much for most of the emulation that you'd be doing on this board. I need to look into adding some resistors on this line to try and cut the fan speed to something that is more reasonable for most users when I get the chance. Here we are with my configured Android build on the RK3588S. The Android build that came with my board did not ship with Google Play, so I had to opt for an alternative store to get some of the stuff that you're going to see in this video. We are rocking 8GB of RAM on this board, so we should be set for high-end emulation, and thermal shouldn't be an issue with our active cooling fan. Now let's start looking at some benchmarks. Our internal read and write speeds aren't anything special, but they should be good enough for my intended use case. For Geekbench 5, we have a single core score of 514 and a multi-core score of 2302. We have a Vulkan score of 4058 and a nearly identical OpenCL score. Rounding out our benchmarks, we have a Wildlife Unlimited Vulkan score of 4593. We aren't going to test many Android games in this video, but I did want to mention something interesting that I found with Diablo Immortal. For some reason, this game allows the RK3588S to use the 60fps option when that option is locked on other powerful devices that can handle the demand. I didn't benchmark the FPS with this setting, but it seems to be around 50 to 60 FPS depending on the scene. Other Android games with gamepad support will also run well on this board. Now it's time to see how the RK3588S holds up for emulation, and we are going to take this all the way up to Switch emulation, which is a bit insane. Unlike the video that I did on the RK3588, I'm going to push this as far as possible with increased rendering resolutions and widescreen hacks. For our first system, here's N64 with the Mupin 64 Plus Core. I have the resolution set to 1080p, and we are using the wide adjusted setting. Next up, here's DS Performance with the Drastic Emulator. Now let's take a look at PS1 performance with the Duck Station emulator. I have the rendering resolution set to 5x and we are using PGXP. If you recall from my RK3588 ITX video, Sega Saturn is bad using the default CPU clocks. If we manually set these to max on this board, 
we get better performance. Dreamcast is another system that runs well on this processor, and we have no problems upscaling games to 1080p with the Flycast Core. As you might expect, PSP is flawless on the RK3588S. For this section, we have the resolution set to 4x, but we could go higher than this if we wanted. For the rest of the video, let's start covering the systems that don't run well on other ARM SBCs. For our first system, we have GameCube with the rendering resolution set to 1080p with the widescreen hacks enabled. Our next demanding system is 3DS, and we are going to be using Citra for these tests at a mix of different rendering resolutions. We are also using max CPU and GPU clocks to improve performance over the base experience. I'm coming with you! I'm here too! Listen. So thanks for your help. Without you, I'd be finished. After doing my last video on the 3588 ITX board, I was very impressed with the PS2 performance. I wanted to push things even further in this video, so we are going to try and push the rendering resolution up to at least 4x if the system can support the load. I didn't test many games last time, so we're going to be testing over 20 games in this one.
pick me up. Enough, Mr. Calderasha, sir. I'm sorry, but I've got a business to run. Oh, that was right on the. Oh, Moving on from PS2, here is Wii performance with the Dolphin emulator. Just like GameCube, we have the rendering resolution set to 1080p for these games. That leaves us with our final system, and this is something that did not run well during my last test. We were essentially limited to using the other Switch emulator for this because Skyline was having issues with Mali GPUs. When I started making this video, the performance was still bad, 
But they did some recent updates to the emulator that unlocked a bunch of games that now run well on Mali GPUs. Given the fact that this is an affordable open source tablet SoC, I am shocked how well this runs Switch games. Like other things in this video, we need to run these games with the max CPU clocks to get the best performance, but this is still a huge jump from a few months ago. As you can see, this is an amazing processor for emulation, and it's a massive jump over the other open source SBCs that came before it. You can find links to this product down below if you want more information. This was a lot of work to put together, so a sub or a like would be massively appreciated. Let me know your thoughts on the RK3588S down below, and I will catch you here next time with another one. Happy gaming everyone, Taki out.